I greet everyone of the peace of the Lord Jesus. In reverence to the, the word of the Lord, I will ask those that can to stand up. I'm going to open up our Bibles on the New Testament in the book of Acts of the Apostles. Acts 16. We're going to read the verses 25, 26, the end of 28, and the end of 29. Acts um, 16. Um, we're just saying that what God can do is indescribable and what can God not do to save man we're going to um, see this in this word that we're going to read 25 but at midnight Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundation of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were loosed. Verse 28, though yourself no harm, for we are all here. The end of the verse, now the end of verse 30 says, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? We praise the Lord, we give you honors for this moment that we have been enjoying fellowship with you yeah, and we ask the Lord uh, that during the explanation of your word that you may once again manifest your grace and your love and your favor and your mercy to us we pray in the holy name of Jesus the church may sit down
a vision uh, the Lord gave to one of his servants and the Lord has shown on this vision that that man he was pleading he was asking for help and every time that we ask God for help is because we are in a situation that we might be able to say not very comfortable and because of this vision those men they went to a specific place and those men went went there and they were imprisoned um, mistreated whipped humiliated And the person who was responsible to to do all those things with these two men was exactly the person of the vision. It was the target. It was the prison guard of Filippo, the one who received the order to spank to humiliate, to mistreat. He was the target. He was exactly that person that God wanted to save. How was the song that we, you just sang? The one just before the message? What God can do. imagine my brother and sister who who are here tonight what God can do to save you to save me what the church because those men Paul and Silas they rep represent the church not the church not the denomination non-denominational but the church of Jesus Christ what it was not able to what the church is not able to withstand in order to, for the project of God to be done in the life of every man to those men they could have been murmuring that they have good reason for it they could be you know, cursing They could even be questioning God. What happened? But they were not doing this. A servant of the Lord doesn't do this. A servant of God, instead of murmuring or questioning God, he does what we are all doing here tonight. We're praying and singing songs of praises to the Lord. There's a text in the Bible that says, In all, you give praise. There is a project, a purpose of God in all things in the life of the Church of God. And the word says that it was close to midnight. What a moment, can we say this? Oh, an amazing moment, being close to midnight. Because when we're close to midnight, it's a moment of great darkness, a dense darkness. But it, it is also a moment that brings hope. Why does it bring hope? Because uh, it's about a new day, it's about to uh, be born. 
And the children just sang that there was a new day is born. It's always a moment of transition between darkness to light. And we see that later the prison guard asked this. And close to midnight, a prophetic moment for everyone, for each one of us. Paul and Silas, they were praying and glorifying the name of the Lord. The Bible says that the other prisoners were listening. The church needs to give a testimony. The church was praying, was praising the Lord, was testifying of the Lord, testifying of the project of God, testifying of the salvation Christ Jesus. The word says that the others, all the others, why all the others? But the church and all the others are in the same situation. They were all in the same situation. When you say in Brazil, they were all in the same boat. The church, they were, were singing, praising the name of the Lord, and all the others were listening. The desire of the Lord for this prophetic moment that we're living today is that all the peoples listen to the voice of the Lord. And if today, my brother and sister, you hear the voice of the Lord. Do not harden your heart. Because the faith comes from listening. And tonight, the Lord wants you to leave this place believing that Jesus Christ is your Savior, is our Savior. And He will come to rescue us, to bring us to His eternity. The word says that when that environment was taken over by the prayers, by the praises, by the glorifications, God began to operate. And by faith and by the word, we can say that God is already operating in this place. And what did God, do, what did God do this day? And it's the same thing that God wants to do tonight, because we are close to midnight. There was there an earthquake. The earth moved. The Lord shook. He moved. The earthquake it does. It, it, it moves the structure, the base, the foundation. And the Lord wants to shake, it wants to move the foundation of many who are here tonight. In order to place there a new foundation, another base, which is Christ. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The word says that there was an earthquake. And the foundation of the prison, according to the war, they moved. What was moved on the prison was the foundation. It has an important meaning for us. What does it mean to have the foundation of the prison move? The foundation of prison is the structure, is the organization that imprisons men is the basis that is strong and solid. Nobody places a criminal, a prisoner, in a place that he can escape from easily. So it shows that it was a, a powerful structure made out of stone, made out of iron, of hardness, fragments, Action and at, at the actions. And the Bible was saying that they were all imprisoned in the same place. 
the base of the prison is the world. And we are imprisoned in this world. But the Lord Jesus himself said, you, are, you don't belong to this world. And how can we um, be set free from this structure, which is the world? Many people are in prison are in prison with in within this world. The things with the things of this world, the desires of this world. How many people have they have no longer any hope in this world? They are anguished in this world. They are depressed in this world. All of them. So the foundation of the prison, they moved. So everything that was imprisoning man in this place, what was condemned man, at that day, at that moment, will, will no longer exist. And because it was not going to exist anymore, was because God was acting, because it was because God was operating. Because our God, our Savior Jesus, is majestic, is glorious, He is powerful, He is unbeatable, He is tremendous, He is strong. He is a soldier of war. He is almighty. El Shaddai is the Adonai. It's, this is the God we are speaking about tonight. The God that can free you. The God can save you. The God can change the whole structure that has imprisoned you to the things of this world. The God that can transform you, my brother and sister. And soon all the gates were opened. All the gates. What is the door that the Lord, uh, what that you want the Lord to open up for you? There's a servant called John that used to say, I am John. I saw a door open in the heavens. He saw that door open because Jesus had opened up a door for him in heaven so that he could enter into a eternity. But I don't know, my brother and sister, what is your desire? What is the door that you desire to be open? But I know that my God tonight is opening all the gates, all the doors. And all the doors were open. And they are being broken. Because God wants to do much more. And he said, my brother and sister, and they were all, all the prisons, uh, all the shackles of, of them were open. You came here in prison, right? Whatever it is, what it has imprisoned you, if you are imprisoned to something or someone or to an structure and you want to get out of but you can't because you don't have strength, you don't have power or authority, but the God that is here today he has all the authority to free you. Bob says, I like this, my brother and sister, if the Son who is our Sa Lord and Savior Jesus Christ deliver you, you will be truly free. So in the name of Jesus Christ, you, my brother and sister, you are already free of everything that was imprisoning you. And they were freed from all the shackles. Nobody remained imprisoned in that place. Everyone, everyone was released. Because the desire of the Lord is to free everyone. My brother and sister, there was there a man. That didn't want only to be freed. He didn't want only a door to be opened for him. 
was already more. Uh, w was already a lot, but he wanted more. But and there are people that have greater necessity than, than others. As a, there is a saying that says, if you somebody asks you to walk with him a mile, go two miles. And God has this more to add, to give to those that need it. And in that service in the prison. The Bible says there was a man there. He wanted to take his own life. He was a prison guard. The, the one from the vision, the target. He said, I'm going to kill myself. Because now the prisoners are going to escape. I was I'm responsible for this. I'm going to have to pay with my own life. Sometimes sometimes man thinks like this. That Lord the Lord present himself in the place in order to take his life in order for him to die there's a text that says the desire of the Lord is that everyone be saved God has no pleasure in the death of the ones who die because the dead they don't praise the Lord but Paul and Silas who were alive we we'll praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In that day, there, Paul and Silas, they, there was a word for them. Give a word for them. And uh, the message that the church has for you, my brothers and sisters who are here tonight, don't harm yourself. Don't harm yourself. My brother and sister, God has already opened up the gates for you. The Lord tonight has freed you from any type of prison that you have may have been imprisoned in. Now that the door has been opened, the prison has been destroyed. You think that God will allow any evil to happen to you, my brother and sister? Don't do any harm to yourself. You know why? Because the church spoke to him. Because everyone is here. The church is still here. Christ is still here. The Holy Spirit is still here. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So my brother and sister, there is still time for salvation. There is still time to have your name written in the book of life. There is still time for you to go to church, to eternity. Don't do any harm to yourself, because God loves you. Don't harm yourself, because God wants to save your soul. We are all here. And then he, he asked a question. Yes, uh, for light. When do someone ask for light? When they are in the darkness. When they are in the darkness. That prison guard, he was in darkness. And when we are in darkness, we cannot discern the things according to what they truly are. And many times man is is in darkness and think that since he is um, working in the prison, he's not a prisoner, but he was in a prison. He was the greatest prisoner of the, the place. That place was the prison guard. He was the one that had greatest need. That's what the church was sent to that place. He didn't have this understanding. But at that day, the Lord revealed himself to him that he needed to leave the darkness. And he says this, as for light. There was a man called Bartimaeus 
that in what other words he asked for the same thing he presented himself to Jesus he, he cried out he cried out Jesus son of David have mercy on me do you want me to do for me that I get out of darkness in other words he wanted to see he wanted to see he wanted to be in the light there's a text that says that if we walk in the light in the same way he is we have fellowship with the brethren in the blood of Jesus purified us of every sin blessed be the name of the Lord they were in the darkness but he's so wanted light that's why he was the target of the service of that day that man which was necessary for him only a door to be opened that he would be delivered from something but he needed to come to the light my brother God is calling you to the light God is calling you to his presence he said I am the light of the world whoever follows me will never walk in darkness when he asked for light he asked to follow Jesus and tonight your soul asked this my brother uh, and sister it asked for light so that you may follow the Lord towards eternity and, it, and he said what, what can I do what is necessary for me what do I need to do in order to be saved so maybe that might be your question tonight I understand that the Lord is speaking to to, to myself in this service I'm a target of this revelation of this message the Lord has already shaken me tonight he has visited my heart. The Holy Spirit has already spoken to my soul. I'm no longer in darkness. I'm in the light. A new day is coming up today for me. What do I need to do in order to remain in the presence of God? What do I need to do in order to walk in the light, in the revelation of the, of the Lord? What do I need to do in order to be saved? That's a very important question for you, for me, for each one of us. What is necessary for me to be saved? Sometimes you may be asking yourself, uh, asking people, and they might answer many things. But what God is telling you, my brother and sister, what the church has to tell you, is that you need to believe in Jesus Christ in order to be saved that's the only thing you need to do believe in Jesus because if you believe you will be saved if you don't believe you are not going to be saved it doesn't matter if a, a door is opened it doesn't matter if you are delivered from a prison if you are not a, if you are not able to achieve salvation, the greatest project of God for our lives is salvation in Jesus Christ. Believe in Jesus, my brother and sister, and you will be saved. Believe in Jesus, and your name will be written in the book of life, and you will have a place in the eternity of God. Amen. Let's sing that song, the children's song. A new day is born.
the church will stand up. We're going to have a word of glorification to the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Lord, we want to praise your name. We give you praise, Lord. Because it's wonderful to serve this God. This God that has sustained us in his presence. God that has made us walk in his path. It's wonderful God that has blessed us every day. To be more than victorious in your presence. We we'll praise the Lord because once again has spoken to our hearts. Because once again you taught us to be truly dependent on you. Because you are the one who can conduct us. You, you are the one who has taught us that only God is, only you are God. You cannot, we should not see the circumstances. We cannot never look to the left or this, the right, but only from heaven where our help comes from. Our fortress our, comes from the Lord because the Lord is the one who has uh, strengthened our steps in the rock, Lord. We praise the Lord because soon we'll be with you in eternity. We know that celestial mansions are being prepared and that your people will live with you eternally. We praise you, Lord, for everything and for much more that you will do in the midst of the church in the name of Jesus. The Lord has shown that there's a woman that she's living lonely and she has pleaded to the Lord in order for her to have a family. Lord, I want to say to you that in the first place that you are not alone. God is with you. The name of Jesus is Emmanuel, which is, which is God with us. And Christ in us is hope of so hope to glory. So my sister, you are not alone. The Lord is present in your life. But she wants a family. What a wonderful thing that we want to have a family. You know what Paul and Silas said to that prison guard that day? Believe in Jesus. And you will be saved, you and your family. Oh, but I don't have a house. The Lord is going to give you a house and your family. Because tonight, the gates of heaven have been opened for this. The Lord has also shown a man that came to the service. And spiritually, he lost everything that he had. But tonight, the Lord is sp spoke to the life of that man. And is giving him salvation once again. When we have salvation, we have everything. When we don't have salvation, we have nothing. So when God gives salvation to you, salvation is a complete package, isn't it? Seek first the things of the Lord and His justice and all the other things will be added on to you. Amen? That's it. Seek the Lord once again, your salvation and the rest the Lord has already provided for our life. Amen. Glory to God.
Glory to God. The church will stand out at this moment. Our brother, pastor, who will be bringing the service to close with apostolic blessing. Your presence was real amongst us. Thanks for the great day that we passed. In the name of Jesus, say, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of our eternal Father, sweet consolation of the Holy Spirit, be upon the whole people of God, now and forever. Amen. The church may sit down. You who are here tonight, who came up to the house of the Lord, desire prayer for your life, um, explanation for the text and the message, the prophetic moment that we're living, the rapture of the church, salvation. Remain where you are. Raise your hand. The brethren are here to give you the proper assistance. And as the text says, we are all here. We are always here every Wednesday, 8 o'clock, Thursday, 8 o'clock, Saturday, 7.30, Sunday, uh, in the mornings, 10.30, and also at 7.30, where you are invited to be, to return, to be w here with us, because here is the house of the Lord, and you, my brother and sister, you are very welcome in this place. And you, I would like to remind the church that our seminar is coming close. The time is short. We need to do our registration, confirm our registration. There's a text that says, I rejoice when they told me, uh, let us go to the house of the Lord. It's a joy to be in the house of the Lord, but it's also a confirmation from the Lord so that we may participate on this. This seminar is going to happen in the region of Orlando. And it would be wonderful if each one of us would be here present. If the brother and sister has some sort of difficulty of doing the registration or information or any other type of necessity, we are here also to help you and to give assistance. Just raise your hand. We're going to pray and give instruction and even do the, the registration for you. Let's go.